Hey, it's Ken from Moon Pie Creations. Today we're going to make a charcuterie board that blew my client's socks off. And to tell the truth, it kind of took my breath away. About four years ago, a buddy of mine called and said, hey, I'm clearing some property. Do you want to go on there and grab any of the leftover wood? I knew he had some trees on there with burls, so I grabbed my chainsaw and off I went. Here's a fun fact for you. I get most of my wood from locally downed trees. Whenever there's a storm in town, I get phone calls or people ask if I want any of the wood. I'll grab my chainsaw and my trailer and I'll head on out. Leanne will attest that this has led to a pretty bad sickness called wood hoarding. But for this customer, it kind of works out because this is some of the most beautiful black cherry I've seen. One of the most important things you can do whenever you're making resin anything, whether it's a bowl or a charcuterie board or a table, is remove the bark and all the dirt. This will help the resin adhere to the wood. So that's what I'm doing here. It took me about three hours altogether to get it all cleaned up and ready to go into the mold. These bug trails are really hard to see, but you really need to get the dirt out of those also. There's also some burrs in the cracks that you need to get down. You don't want any of that being seen after you get it casted. I also try to get rid of as much as the rotted wood as I can, which you can see right here, I'm chiseling a little bit of it away while I'm getting the bark here. I know all of you know the importance of good table saw maintenance, and I wanted you guys to think that I knew the same thing. So I decided to clean my table before I started this project just so I could get off all the beer can rings that were on there because I knew you guys would chastise me for it if I didn't. A little bit of T90 and a little bit of a 120 to 220 sandpaper goes a long way. I cut this burl when it was wet so there was a lot of wood movement as it dried. What I'm doing here is making a joiner sled. This will help me get a good edge on there. I don't have a joiner anymore since my incident. I can't use them. So you might think that the uh, screw holes are going to be an issue here, but they won't. They won't be seen at all. What I should be doing here is putting a slight angle on it since the mold actually has a slight angle. But I'm not going to do that. We're just going to go ahead and put it in straight and then throw some resin in it. I'm going to go ahead and clean this with some acetate. And after I'm done with that, I'm going to go ahead and hit it with some mold release, but I won't show you that. Then I will place the pieces of wood inside of the mold and then we'll get started. I mentioned earlier some rotted wood. Another way to fix that is what I'm doing right here. That's a 50-50 solution of resin and acetate. I'm going to put that on the wood. It'll soak in and I keep soaking it in until it won't take any more. And by the time it dries, you'll have some hardened wood, hopefully. I used a foam brush, and that's probably not the uh, most sound thing to use with, with acetate as it dissolves. Uh, but it was all I had, and I had to do this very quickly. And I did get some pieces of the foam brush uh, that came off and came apart onto the burl. But it, it's going to get planed off in the end. I think it came out fairly well, and I soaked it in pretty well, too. As you sit there and put on this acetate resin mix, it gives you a good idea of what this burl is going to look like when it's done. And I'll tell you what, this is when I really started uh, deciding this was some extraordinary burl right here. Since you mix this resin with acetate, it takes a little bit longer to dry. Normally I'll use the two to one and it'll take about four hours to dry. This is going to take overnight, so I'm doing this right before I go in. To the house so I keep putting it on putting it on putting it on and when I see little dry spots that means it's the wood sucking in the resin and it just needs more so I keep putting it on there and it takes about an hour for me to do this but in the end it stopped sucking it in and that's when I went inside and came out the next morning So 
So this is the next day, and what I'm doing here is I'm going to calculate how much resin I need to put in here. And what that is, is that you take the length of it, uh, you do an average of the width and the depth, and you times it all by that, and it gives you cubic inches. Once you get the cubic inches, you can go to Google and use Google to transfer that over uh, to a liter, and that's what I did. And you'll notice that I grossly miscalculate what I need in the end, and I have to do another batch. So my calculation showed that I needed about a liter and a half of resin. So I mixed up about a liter and a half. And uh, yeah, it just wasn't enough. I had to do another liter and a half and that still wasn't enough. So it was probably more like about three and a half liters of resin. I'm not sure where my calculations went wrong, but they were, so no big deal though. But what is a big deal is that I used the purple haze and the black onyx and I run out of black onyx on the first one so I had to use the imperial black onyx on the second pour which is a different color slightly uh, but in the end you'll see what I do and it comes out just fine now before you pour you need to make sure that you're level uh, frontwards, backwards, every which way, just make sure it's level so you don't get it all more on one side. And once you do, you're ready to pour. When you're putting your resin in, don't forget to get some of those voids that you want that purple into. This board, what I'm going to do is after I do the next pour, I'm going to wait for it to tack up probably two or three days. And then I'm going to add a clear coat on top of it. It'll really make it pop. But I want to make sure I get those voids filled in the meantime. Here's the second liter and a half of resin. You can tell it's slightly different color. So I'm gonna try to blend this together and I do something I probably wouldn't ever do if I was using any other resin and that is using one of my mixers to mix it in the mold. But it seems to work out. The reason you don't do that is because it makes all those bubbles. But this is thick set fathom and the bubbles all rise to the top and you'll be just fine. Uh, just use the torch to pop them rather than a blowgun because I don't like what the blowgun does. Here's a tip from Cam over at Blacktail Studios. Use a paintbrush to get the bubbles off the side because the bubbles do like to stick to the side. So you can see some of them are coming up and I get those. Here's the top view of the pour and you can really see the difference in color. It's a lighter color, but I think in the end, it just makes it pop that much more. So it was a happy little accident. There seems to be a point in all my projects where I just totally screw up. And last night I came in and I swirled the resin. It was a little bit too thick and I caused some bubbles. I popped all those bubbles and right now I am pouring what I thought was resin on the top of this. And I make two pours and I don't want to give away too much. You'll see what happens in just a minute. After pouring the clear coat, you can still see some of the bubbles down below because the air got trapped in them. I use this dental pick here to kind of bring those bubbles up to the surface and get resin down in there. And then I pushed them down a little bit to get the clear resin into those little bubble holes. Seems to have worked well. Hmm. Something's going on here. I'm getting bubbles in the layer below here. Apparently, when I mix the first clear batch, my pump got gotten clogged up. This pump right here. This one with the high performance epoxy in it 
got clogged up. So there's only hardener underneath there. Oh man, that's a. So I want you to see this as I push and do this. I get more and more air bubbles coming under here. So you can see it right here. Right there. Watch. See how the air bubble is getting bigger? That means that there's no air up under here, this top layer, which is hard. Because the second time after I noticed it was clogged up, I put this next thing on here. This is going to be a mess. I uh, hope I didn't ruin this board. I'm just going to have to change what I'm doing. So the board sat there for almost a month while I decided what to do. And I figured out that I should just go ahead and drain off the hardener from in between. And this is what I'm doing here, taking it out. And it was just an oh incredible God. mess. There's a void in here. <laughs> oh my God, look at all that stuff coming out. And this is why I did this. Oh my gosh. I need something to lean this against there, you know. I'm gonna let this all drain out and then I'll figure out what I need to do with that top part. I'll probably plane it off after everything drains out. The board sat against my drum sander there for three or four days while it drained off. This right here is a sped up video about a hundred times of the resin leaking out. You can see it just has that little tiny area to come out of. I thought it was kind of neat so I thought I'd show you guys. I know what you're wondering, was I able to save the hardener? No, I was not able to save the hardener. It's not worth scooping it all in somewhere and then straining it out, getting all the impurities out. So I just left it there. I ended up putting some sawdust in it and then threw it in the trash. I came up with a plan to run it through the planer. So I needed to make sure it was cleaned up. I used some denatured alcohol to get all the sticky uncured hardener out and then I decided to scrape off some of the gelled up resin that was sitting on top of the board and this is what I'm doing here. I was a little bit worried when I was using my planer on this. As you get that resin too thin it has a tendency to pop out and shoot everywhere and I, it started getting a little bit too thin. You'll see in a minute a piece broke off so I stopped and just decided to do it a different way. I guess I could have used my Dremel to go ahead and carve around this whole thing and bring this out. But you know, sometimes you just gotta get some of your frustrations out. So I started beating it with this wooden mallet that I have. And it was fairly therapeutic. Although it was tough to get all the little pieces out. There was still some gelled up hardener inside the little area where the bubbles were coming out in the last part of the video. And then I cleaned it up with some more uh, denatured alcohol. So, this is it all cleaned up. You can see that I, would, I put it in when it was still kind of wet. So it kind of made this stuff all gnarly. I don't know what this is going to look like. I don't know if it's going to work. And if not, we'll just plane it down till it gets flat with the purple. And that'll be fine. I'll just put a clear coat over it. But I want to make this a really thick one. So we will see. We're gonna use the two to one resin. I use my pump again. I've got it cleared out. It's working fine. Now, the, the two to one has a slight yellow to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some of this blue sapphire and just put a drop in it and that helps blue it out and it'll help it get a little bit clearer. I don't know how it works, but it does. Yes, I did check and make sure the pump wasn't clogged up again. So we're going to do this one more time and see if it works and see how it looks. Once I got it out of the mold, it looked a lot better than I thought it would. And it was time to start doing the really drawn out process of filling all the holes. 
and then sanding, filling all the holes, and then sanding, and this took forever. After filling the large holes, I decided to cut it down to size and put the chamfers on it, and that's what I'm doing here. Once that's done, I can go ahead and head over to the finishing table and start filling all the small little holes that I need to with some Star Bond. I learned the trick of putting this painter's tape on the bottom for a better crisper line with the resin from Crafted Elements. I'm always hopeful when I'm doing a resin coating that it'll I'll only have to do one. But I have to babysit this thing with a torch and go back and pop all the bubbles constantly. And inevitably, there's always some dimples in the resin. So I have to go back and I'm going to do a second coat on this after I'm done with this one. That actually makes it pop a little bit more. Whenever you're doing a second coat, you have to scuff up the first coat. And this also helps level out the resin a little bit and make sure you're getting it very well so you don't want any large built up areas of resin. Once you have it all scuffed up, it's time to clean it with some denatured alcohol or some acetate. All right, guys, uh, unlike you do in the bedroom, you're gonna need to massage this board for more than five seconds to get it all spread out. What the resin tends to do is spread out from the epoxy that's already on the top there and hardened so you need to make sure you get it very well especially pay attention to the sides because it likes to spread apart on the sides too this tabletop resin tends to have a lot of bubbles in it and I don't know why it might be because it's so cold in my shop I keep it at 70 degrees it may just be the resin but I get a lot of bubbles so I babysit this thing for 45 minutes to an hour afterwards and I continuously pop bubbles as it goes and little specks of uh, white will come up and I'll get that off there I just make sure that it's looking really good for the next hour and then I'll put a box over it let it harden up from there Taking the tape off the back is pretty easy. Then you don't have those drips that you have to sand down. And once that tape is off, you have a fairly crisp line that doesn't take much sanding to make it blend in. What I didn't show here is I actually filled all the small little holes and voids with Starbond CA glue. Then I start sanding up to 600 grit, making sure that all the small little nicks and swirl marks from the sander are gone. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're in the home stretch. I'm cleaning this with some acetate, and we're going to use Rubio Monocoat to put a final coat on the bottom here. With Rubio Monocoat, all you're going to do is put it on. You're going to work it into the wood, let it sit for about 15 minutes, and then you're going to wipe it off. I got the file for this little jig to do the feet with off of Thingiverse. Printed it up on my artillery 3D printer, and man, I'm loving this. It's a lot easier to place these feet with it. And we're gonna call this one done. Gonna get it in the mail, send it off to the customer, and hopefully they'll like it as much as I do. Appreciate you guys watching my videos. If you can, hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button, and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about the board. All right, until next video, stay cool.